Good day and welcome to Medical Moron. Today we start a series of shorty videos where we delve into the OR hospital people. I know you understand the OR is a branch of the healthcare service. I'm hoping to grow beyond the branch and into the tree since it's the entire tree that makes your health possible. I am hoping to bring you closer to the orderlies, secretaries, RNs, techs and healthcare workers you probably never thought of. The job series will be a collection of shorty videos highlighting these roles. I will also continue to bring you your common surgeries on a regular basis. Today, we start with John Hellam. John is an integral part of an OR and has worked his entire life in and around the OR. I will ask the questions to John you sometimes can't or won't. More after this. <laughs> John, come on in here and have a seat. So John, I know from talking prior uh, to this session here, you've had several jobs in the OR. I was wondering what they were and what your position is now. So when I was 18 years old, I started fresh out of high school in the surgery department and my job was what they call a surgical aid or an orderly. In that role, your position is to clean the rooms, get all medical equipment needed for the procedure, such as positioning devices, and tourniquets and things like that, depending on the procedure that you had. And also clean and turn over the rooms to get them ready for the next procedure. Okay, is there a structure? Do they have some uh, procedural manuals on how to properly clean rooms or is this just something you decide to do because you're a good cleaner at home? No, there's definitely structure involved. Everything you have to have is dwell times, how long each chemical has to be on a certain surface in order for the surface to be deemed clean correctly. Um, that does not mean it's sterile, it means that it's clean correctly. Okay, so summarize now position. How does your role impact the OR now? The role that I hold now or at that time? Right now. The role that I have now is called a materials management specialist. Mm. I have moved up the ladder from surgical aid. I went okay. to scrub tech school where I became a surgical technologist, which your role at that time is setting up procedures and assisting the doctors during the cases. Okay. And I've recently taken a new role, which is materials management specialist, which goes over all equipment needed for the procedure, contacting physicians, making sure physicians give you the awareness of what's coming, and also making sure reps are ready. It's the, and what you're saying is, I'm, I'm giggling a little bit because it's so important. And you do this on a regular basis. You contact, and I hear you on the phone, uh, because we do work in close quarters. I hear you on the phone, you're telling these guys, we have this or we don't have this, you're gonna have to kind of deal with it. So you do have to say no to these guys, correct? A hundred percent, that's probably the most uh, stressful part of my job, okay. is having to tell people, no, we're not on contract, or no, we're not able to use that, okay. because it's unavailable and you have to do what you have to do. But are the patients safe? Patients are 100% safe. It's never, we would not provide something that for patient care. It is just, you may have to use something comparable. It's just not the same brand as you wanted. Okay, understood. John, do you enjoy your work? Do you, do you like what you're doing? I mean, I'm probably the worst person, right, to be honest, to <laughs> ask that on the planet because I'm a happy guy that enjoys going to work. Uh, I wake up every morning and wanna go, so yes, uh, I do enjoy <laughs> good, the job. Good. If someone wanted to make their way into your role, what steps would you tell them to take? I mean, there's a few different ways. If you wanted to come into my role, it would be going through school for business or going through surgical technology, but that's gonna take a long time to climb the ladder to where I am. Okay. Did you have help getting to your role or did you just kind of uh, get into the orderly and then you say, well, this is what I wanna do next and then this and it just kind of fell into it or is this something somebody can apply to? So for me, um, I wanted to be a nurse, to be honest with you. Okay. Um, I just came into a financial dilemma where I needed to make more money than I was as a surgical aide, and I needed to do that quickly. 
Surgical, surgical tech school was 18 months instead of the years that it took to become a nurse. Mm -hmm. And I knew I had the ability to make six figures as a surgical tech someday. Right. So that was my goal. Okay, so materials management is everything that the physician or the hospital could potentially need to do this particular surgery. Is that correct or a good Cor summary? Correct. Okay. For every so, procedure. John, if you were starting an OR from scratch, what would be some founding principles? What are some things you would tell a staff they must improve upon? Now, keeping in mind, I'm not talking about you go fire this guy, you go hire this guy. I'm talking about founding principles, something you start, what would you improve upon? I mean, there's a few things. My first and foremost thing I would say to improve upon is communication. Mm. I would say communicate with your physicians if it's a procedure that you don't know a lot about or the preference card is different than something you recognize. Step out, talk to your physician. Before the procedure, what kind of suture do you need? What kind of cauterization devices are you going to use? Yeah. These kind of things. Any special instrumentation that is not used on a normal, daily, routine basis mm -hmm. for this physician. That would be first and foremost. Uh, secondly, professionalism. I mean, to give you an honest answer, the OR is fun. It is usually a group of people that are very high energy and fun and have very strong personalities. Mm -hmm. Now, that being said, I like that, but you need to still be professional and know that some things are heard by patients in pre-op and, po and post-op, so you need to be professional. 100% agree with you. As a matter of fact, uh, the experiences I've found in the OR were that people tend to be a lot of alpha males around here, you know, guys like John and many other people around there. There's a lot of people with very strong personalities as John suggested. Okay, John, I understand what you're saying. It makes a lot of sense here. Um, you know, I've been noticing, John, you have a physique that's similar to my own. Pretty good there, right? You know it, you know it. So I was wondering, uh, you work out? I do, uh, just a little bit. I've done, I've done about 17, 18 years of consistent gym time. Wow, wow. Were you always kind of a big boy, or I mean big boy as in chubby, muscular, skinny, what were you? Absolutely not, actually I was the complete opposite. When I graduated from high school at 18 years old, I was only 104 pounds. So I didn't hit my growth spurt until in high school, 104 in high school. When I graduated, so 18 years old at 104 pounds. I didn't hit my growth spurt until I was about 19, 20-ish and stayed consistent in the gym since then. Now I weigh 203 this morning. Wow, that's impressive. You got, uh, are, are they solid or are they kind of? Uh, they're, they're a little solid, Ray. There's not much flab. It's on not them. bad. I'd show you mine, but you know, I don't like showing off, so. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't either. So. <laughs> Understood. So you go to the gym on a regular basis, yes? Yes. Uh, what is what is the schedule? I mean, so my my normal schedule that I run is two days on, one day off, and on my one day off is just strictly cardio day. It doesn't mean I don't go to the gym. Okay. I still obtain, but my normal gym regimen is wake up at three in the morning, start my workout at four thirty in the morning before work, enjoy a full work day that consists of lots of food Jeez, that is impressive can you uh, can you do 50 push-ups I can do 50 push-ups all right that's pretty good I can do more so, uh, <laughs> if you'd like to on this video have a competition with me we're welcome to do that <laughs> maybe next time John what is uh, I'm, I'm wondering though I have a few more questions how much of your physique is diet related um, I mean, that, that is the honest biggest question in any fitness community and anyone who knows much about it. The gym part is I do because I love it. It's not so much to get the physique that I have. This is just a, a repercussion of something I love to do. Now diet is 90%. If you don't have a good diet, you'll never have a good physique. You could, the saying is you can never outwork a bad diet. So those beers and those donuts over there are probably not a good idea. But. Phenomenal for enjoying yourself and I do believe you still need to enjoy yourself but not good for maintaining a good physique. Okay well I still got a six pack. Okay. A beer in the fridge. <laughs> okay so uh, I have a video on healthy habits, diets, exercise, uh, losing weight coming up soon. I'm wondering if you maybe want to participate in that. You sound like you know a lot about these things and you show obviously that you do 
So I'm wondering if you'd be okay participating in that. I'd be happy to help anyone that needs help. Uh, it's something I love and I'm passionate about, so right. absolutely. Right, excellent, okay, good. Well, <clears throat> good, I'm glad you're happy to come back because uh, John, that about wraps it up for this shorty. John's position as materials manager in, in the OR uh, kind of summarizes what you do. You know, it says a lot about the OR and a lot about what happens in the OR. So please like, subscribe, share this. Now yeah, continue to bring this enlightening information on a regular basis. Don't worry, folks. I will get John on a diet and have him looking great for our diet and healthy eating episode. He's looking a little heavy to me. So I guarantee to have him down to fighting weight soon. <laughs> Glad you didn't ask me that question because <laughs> people at work, if they watch it, they would have got pissed. Yeah, they know. Uh, they would have got mad. It was, ah, it I mean, I don't mind answering it. I don't. <laughs> if you want to go back and answer, I'm going to answer it because it's going to be. Au revoir. Thank you.